A Living Faith Through Deeds of Love The Lord Says Whoever believes in me, out of his innermost shall flow rivers of living waters. This text is given like a mousetrap, and it is made like a pit, with which lions, panthers, and tigers are caught. It is also like a cornerstone, over which many shall stumble at night. And I say, whoever stumbles against it and falls will have a lot of trouble getting up again. Why is that? Now and then I demanded faith, and I preached everywhere love through deeds and words. I said, if you had faith, you would be able to move mountains. I also said what the current text says. Nevertheless, I tell you again, I did not say what the text says. For I said, be doers and not vain listeners of my word. I also said that those who say to me, Lord, Lord, meaning they believe in the Son of God, will not enter the kingdom of God, but only those who do the will of my Father. I also said, whoever lives according to my word is the one who loves me, but whoever loves me, to him I will come in my fullness and reveal myself to him. I also said, I give you only one commandment, that you should love each other, just like I love you. That is, how you will be truly recognized as my disciples. Now I ask, what shall man do? Should he make do with faith alone, which is recommended, or should he only hold on to love and believe nothing else as what his love for me gives to him, and which he has obtained through deeds, done according to my word? Because I have invoked the deeds of love as the only valid criteria through which one can recognize if my teachings are of human or divine origin. For I said it, whoever will act according to my word will recognize if my teachings are from men or God. Now, what does it say about that? Whoever believes in me, out of his innermost shall flow rivers of living waters. The living waters also represent the living wisdom out of heaven, which also must be regarded as a valid criteria for the divinity of my word. Now, we have two things to examine in front of us, where the one always finds his adversary in the other. For in the saying of Lord, Lord, is understood the complete faith in the Son of Man. But there it says that through this faith, the heavenly kingdom will not be obtained. And in the current text, there is a promise that whoever believes in me out of his innermost shall flow rivers of living waters. Now, the question is, was I a double teacher? Or was I one of those who floats with the tide and therefore preach in a crowd of believers from the sole value of faith and in a crowd of active people, I would preach the sole value of the deed? If so, I would obviously contradict myself. The Pharisees strongly believed in the statutes of Moses, and that for timely and also for spiritual reasons back then. And still, they were all attacked by me in the most sensitive way because of their disbelief. Why was I not content with their first belief, and why did I attack them, since they did not want to believe in me, and they were called evildoers by me, because they lived in the literal sense according to the law and did not want to turn themselves to my teaching? Why did I let the Pharisee leave the temple unjustified, even though he was always acting according to the law? and let the sinful tax collector leave it justified? Why did I not respect the statutes of Moses in the first place by not regarding the Sabbath? Why did I myself annoy the Pharisees by that and taught myself, woe to anyone who annoys his neighbor? 
Yes, I have even given a teaching which states that a man should remove a limb that angers him and enter the heavenly kingdom in a crippled form instead of entering hell as a whole being. Tell me, how does this all fit together? A big pile of contradictions lies before you. How will you bring all of them to a common denominator? I tell you, you will never find a way out of this labyrinth on your own. However, I will untie the knot with ease, like the hero of Macedonia. And therefore, listen now. There is a difference between what I simply said and what I have commended, but there also is a difference between saying and saying. One saying is like a negation and the other is like an affirmation. A negating one is like a natural one, an affirmative one is like a spiritual one. There is no commandment in the natural sense, but there is one in the spiritual sense. Therefore, when it says, I did not say, it means as much as, I have not commanded it. And when it says, I did say it, it means as much as, I have commanded it. But when I was talking about faith, I always meant the living faith, the faith coupled with love, but an isolated faith I always rejected. That's why I already told you before, I did not say, Whoever believes in me, out of his innermost shall flow rivers of the living waters. That means as much as, nobody will reach the light through faith alone, but only through the deed according to my word. But as I say here, whoever believes in me, out of his innermost shall flow rivers of living waters. There I say as much as, whoever has a living faith, coupled with love, will be introduced to the wisdom of heaven, and if you are able to think just a little for yourselves, you will easily realize that with this only the lowest level of heaven is promised. But that no level of heaven is promised for faith alone, your own experience has taught you that, because you have also believed in me since your childhood. But ask yourselves, how many drops of any living water have flown out of your body? Did you bring it so far with your 40-year-old faith that you have evidently found the immortality of your inner being completely on account of any drops of living water within you? I have already granted you so much of the most authentic living waters, and still you are not aware of so many things about your continuing existence after your body's death. But I am not a liar. I have promised rivers of living waters upon faith. Now believers, where are these rivers? From your own experience, you can sufficiently derive that I, as the eternal truth and wisdom, certainly didn't mean faith alone in this current text, but only the faith which was known to all of my disciples, namely, faith coupled with love for God and love for your brothers and sisters. Because faith alone cannot bring forth anything fruitful for the eternal life, likewise a husband cannot beget children with and out of himself. He must marry a woman, and only then, by way of his burning love, he will be able to beget children with his wife. The children are the natural meaning of the rivers of living waters that flow from the loins of the body. Furthermore. The body or loins in this text convey as a material image the deed of love itself, and the whole text in its revealed state says, Whoever believes in me within his heart, his deeds will be fruitful for his eternal life. From this very clear meaning we can see ever so clearly that I have always negated faith alone, but never affirmed it, because otherwise I would have contradicted myself in a most shameful and obvious way before the eyes and ears of the whole world. So, whenever in my word it talks about faith, you always have to understand it as if you were talking about a purse. When someone says, I have given him my purse, the 
being filled is self-evident, because an empty purse is of no use to anyone. It's the same with the faith, looked at it from my perspective. I never understand the empty faith, but always the one filled with love. That's why I say it once again. I did not say, whoever has faith in me, out of his body will flow rivers of living waters. But I said, whoever has faith in me, out of his body will flow rivers of living waters. With the first negation, the simple and empty faith is understood, which never gives even a single drop of living water. With the second case, however, the filled faith is understood, where the rivers of living waters will surely follow. And that is, which I affirm, who acts according to my Father's will, he will recognize where the teaching comes from. The Father is the love, and this love never settles for pretense, but only for the real existence. Of what use is the dull lantern shine of your soul faith in the infinity of creation? You may try to grab left and right and look up and down, but the only things that come towards you are faint rays. But far away are the things, and from far away you receive nothing but faint rays, because the dream is enough for the sleeper. He considers it as reality, for as long as he sleeps, but when he wakes up, he is looking for reality and firmness everywhere. But what happens if man sleeps throughout his entire earthly life and thinks the delusions are reality? What will happen when he wakes up from this earthly dream life after the removal of his body? What will he grasp after? What will he rely on? He'll be surrounded by night on all sides. From where will he take the light to brighten up the most obscure night around him? I say, therefore, it is better for one to feel captivated by all kinds of doubts, for he proves that he has an alert spirit which is still in the night. He has realized the invalidity of the dream images early, and he is calling for the day within himself with great longing. But the dreamer knows nothing about his own night. He is a lord, doing whatever he wants, drinking and eating, and he thinks all of that is reality. However, when he wakes up, only then he will become aware of the great emptiness within himself. But it will certainly be too late, for when the faith, filled with love, does not bring forth rivers of living waters during his life in the body, how shall he do it when the loins are gone? Or, if somebody cannot receive any money with the purse, how will he manage to get it when he has neither a purse nor money? Or if one cannot obtain the life when he has it together with the necessary sack of life, how will he acquire it when he loses the sack together with the life? Whoever cannot exist when he exists, how will he exist when he does not exist? It will only be given to the one who does have it, and whoever has nothing, it will be taken from him what he has. I mean, this quite extended explanation should be clear enough. Therefore, you too better strive for the faith filled with love, because the empty faith is nothing but a sheer dream. Do you want to see rivers of living waters flowing from your loins? Then your faith must become alive through the deeds of love. Amen. <laughs>